Welcome back, everyone, to another Die Con Die sectional production hosted by Deathstroke Nine. Today, we're going to be reacting to the Traveling Wilburys. Or, yeah, I think that's how you pronounce that. Handle with care. Now, you guys recently informed me about a super group that I had never heard of before, and so I looked them up. and Let's let's see what the lineup for this for this group is. Okay, um, for this song specifically, just by looking at um, uh, let's see. See, so by looking at the lyric sheet here, we've got George Harrison, Roy Orbison, Bob Dylan, Tom Petty. Anybody else? No? Uh, Jeff Lynn <laughs> as well. Wow. Okay. So, and that's just uh, on vocals. There's so many different um, people that you guys have been telling me about for a long time. So many different, you know, icons. Like, I feel like... Any of these people by themselves would be, and it, 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 I could listen to a song by any of those people, be an incredible song. So I'm excited to see what they did all working together. Now this is the official music video for this song. Um, thank you for joining me. If you're new to the channel, my name is Daniel, and here we react to music. And yeah, just have a good time while doing it. Um, and at the end of each video, I do research on the songs. All right, uh, and look at the lyrics and all that. So without further ado, Let's blow this up full screen. There we go. All right. Traveling Will... It looks like Will Burries. Traveling Will Burries. Handle with care. Let's go. Care for the... I think that's going to be the only time I pause it. I don't know. This group might block. I don't know. Hopefully they don't. Um, it's such a... Like, it's... This is perfect for this type of thing, you know? Like, it's... Um, hmm. Let me think of how to say this. So... Each of these artists could probably have tried to pull the song in a direction that they wanted it to go or in a direction that fit with their the way that they normally make music. Um, but by doing that, they might have taken away some of the creative control of the other artists in the group. So it seems like what they did was they made a song that's pretty, like, so far we've got some chords... I think we've got a good, I think there's bass line back there and, you know, the drums, right? The chords are relatively simple and it looks like they're all kind of playing together. So it's a, almost a jam campfire song that they can all show their, their singing together as a, as a collaboration between them, which is what makes this so interesting to me, you know, which is what made me want to go uh, react to this. So, um... Yeah, all right, let's uh, let's keep going. Let's finish the song. I mean, so far, it's pretty straightforward, but, you know, a lot of... I think it's perfect. Like, it's a, it's a love song. It's such a great template for them all to, you know, interact with each other. And I love the video, just seeing them all. They're a little bit older in this. Um, all right, let's keep going. Bring it back. Okay, um, loved it. Like I said, felt like a perfect song for this type of collaboration. Um, but they're a whole band, so let me know what else you'd like me to react to by them down below in the comments. Before we look at the lyrics and the and how the song came to be, let's go ahead and just look up uh, Traveling Wilburys, Supergroup. All right, let's see who it is. Sometimes referred shortened to just the Wilburys. We're an English-American supergroup consisting of Bob Dylan, George Harrison, Jeff Lynne, Roy Orbison, and Tom Petty. Okay. Originating from an idea discussed by Harrison and Lynn during the sessions for Harrison's album Cloud Nine. The band formed in April 1988 after the five members united to record a bonus track for Harrison's next European single. When this collaboration, Handle With Care, was deemed too good for such a limited release, the group agreed to record a full album together, titled Traveling Wilburys Volume 1. Following Orbison's death, in 1988, they released a second album, which they titled Traveling Wilburys Volume 3. Okay. Interesting. Rest in peace, uh, Roy Orbison. But I don't know, why would they... So they released a second album without him, or they released the second album that he was working on before he passed away? And then also, why would they name it Volume 3 when they... I don't know. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um... All right, so let's take a look at the lyrics. They were very straightforward, although they seemed 
to kind of apply to more of a celebrity than a so it, it feels more of a lot of songs are supposed to be like relatable i think they're 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 trying to you know express in a way that everyone can feel encompassed by or as many people as possible can feel encompassed by right like when you're listening to a love song a lot of times you're like all right what in this like when a lo- when a song hits you really powerfully most of the time that will happen because you were just had some experience of your own validated with this song it's more of all right they're a super group of a bunch of superstars and they are telling you about themselves you know they're trying to say look we've been commercialized and stuff but we're still humans please handle us with care almost you know um you know we've had people hating on us we've had so many obstacles in our way um and then when we make it big yeah that's interesting actually this is kind of all this is a little bit of a tangent but when i uh, a few days ago um i watched a video on youtube about uh about a music group um and the the video was about the like tragic backstory of the lead singer of the group right and i looked in the comments and someone had commented that they do not feel bad for them so the video talked about how multiple family members of theirs passed away at the same time how they were struggling with all types of um you know (laughs) addiction and suicidal tendencies and all types of terrible terrible stuff was happening to them all at once and they wanted to kill themselves and you know uh and instead they like poured that into the creative output which the fans have now considered to be one of their best albums you know all this stuff right all these terrible horrible things that this person is is had happened to them and these people in the comments section were saying like oh he's famous who cares He got famous, so that means we're able to turn a blind eye to it, almost. Does that just mean that those people are, like, jealous or something? Like, it's... I don't know. So, anyway. Just something to think about. It's interesting. And I've seen it a lot, but that was one where it was very, like, blatant. I've seen it other places where people are like... Uh, where someone talked about actors, and I'm an actor. Obviously, I haven't been in anything big yet. I would hope to be, eventually. Um, But, like, I've seen people on the internet talk about, oh, yeah, actors are just people who have, like, something wrong with them and can have to pretend to be people they're not for a living. And this whole long, like, dude... You're trying to express a story in an art form. I don't understand why that's such a problem for you, you know? Um, So that's, to me, to bring it back to the song, it almost feels like that's what they're saying. I've been beat up and battered around. I'm a human being, too, you know? I might be a celebrity, and that that probably applies to all of them. I've been sent up. I've been shot down, all right? I was up and down. You're the best thing that I ever found. Handle me with care. My reputation is changeable. The situation's tolerable. Baby, you're adorable. Handle me with care. Okay? So, reputation's changeable, right? So, anything you could do could sway the balance. You get up, right? Think of it almost... Oh, that's a pretty interesting analogy, but think of it as a pyramid, right? When you're down at the bottom, there's a lot more to, for people to sift through. Most people aren't going to notice certain things that you do. When you start to put yourself out there and you start to rise up that pyramid until you're close to the top of the attention level, um, any little thing that you do could be taken the wrong way or, you know, something that you do could just be bad. <laughs> and it could change everything about your reputation the situation's tolerable he says now i'm not sure about that you know they are celebrities so they do they're obviously wealthy people you know um 
But he's saying the situation's only just tolerable. It's not good, it's not great, it's a tolerable situation. But baby, you're adorable. Handle me with care. I'm tired of being lonely. I still have some love to give. Will you show me that you really care? That's another problem with becoming famous, you know? Um, if you become famous, then how do you know who's actually caring about you, you know? Won't you show me that you really care? Do you just care about me because I'm a celebrity and you want to be able to talk about how you interacted with a celebrity? Do you just care about me because you want to, like, get money from me, you know? Or do you actually... Yeah. Interesting. Everyone's got somebody to lean on. Put your body next to mine and dream on. I've been fobbed off. What does that mean? Uh, slang for crappy knockoffs or bootlegs. He loves the monetary rewards of success, but hates that he has to fight against pirating. Okay, interesting. And I've been fooled. I've been robbed and ridiculed in daycare centers and night schools. Handle me with care. People have a hard time sympathizing with celebrities. In the song, Harrison's listing the downsides of fame and asking for sympathy. Oh, yeah, that's, that's kind of what this song is. Been stuck in airports, terrorized, sent to meetings, and hypnotized, overexposed, commercialized, handle me with care. Repeat of the chorus. I've been uptight, and it made a mess, but I'll clean it up myself, I guess. Oh, the sweet smell of success. Handle me with care. A bittersweet lion, Harrison always had a touchy relationship with the business side of his profession. His whole career, the so-called quiet beetle, was always the most vocal about his constant annoyance with having to constantly deal with accountants and contracts and the seedier aspects of fame. But when you take the good with the bad, he's old enough to, by then to understand that all these annoyances are an unavoidable, unpleasant side effect of the high level of success that he attained. Which is true. You know, they are things that you have to deal with. Um, all right. Uh, let's, let's see the, uh, the song facts for this song. Wow, it didn't chart very high. That's sad. All right, chart number 45 in the U.S. and number 21 in the U.K. Uh, came out in 1988 off their Volume 1 album. This was the first single released by the Traveling Wilburys, who were a supergroup created by George Harrison and Jeff Lynne. So they're the ones who started it. Um, Petty, Tom Petty explained to Mojo Magazine January 2010 what it was like co-writing a song with Bob Dylan. He said, there's nobody I've ever met who knows more about the craft of how to put a song together than he does. I've learned so much just from watching him work. He has an artist's mind and can find in a line the key word and think how to embellish it to bring the line out. I had never written more words than I needed, but he tended to write lots of verses. Then he'd say, this verse is better than that, or this line. Slowly this great picture emerges. That's awesome. He was very good in the traveling... Um, Wilburys, when someone had a line, he could make it a lot better in big ways. The title, Handle With Care, came offhand when George Harrison saw the phrase on the side of a cardboard box in the studio. That's hilarious, actually. They uh, didn't have the slide intro. I set up my... Oh, Tom Petty's Heartbreakers imitate Mike Campbell. I'm sorry. I don't know how to talk, apparently, or read. Tom Petty's Heartbreakers bandmate... Mike Campbell was originally asked to play the guitar part on Handle With Care that George Harrison eventually performed. They didn't have the slide intro. I set up my amp, Tom, Jeff, and George are there. I'm trying my best. But I thought, oh my gosh, I'm playing the guitar in front of a beetle. I played ver pretty good, but I said, I really think George would be better on this. His fill would be much sweeter. So he used my amp, and I handed him my guitar, and he came up with that beautiful guitar part. That's kind of sad, but also pretty cool. Let's see what the comments under that video are before we uh, wrap it up. Thank you guys for joining me. Traveling Wilburys. That's so cool that they did that. Yeah, when any one guy from your band could fill a stadium on his own. How could this band not be perfect? <laughs> Rest in peace, Roy, George, and Tom. Your legacies live on forever. Yeah, that was so sad when Tom Petty passed away not long ago. <sighs> Five musical de geniuses, each one in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, George twice over. One with a Nobel Prize. Greatest supergroup ever. Roy has one of the most recognizable voices ever. 
This song is actually one of the best songs ever. Not sure why it's not talked about more. Uh, okay. Okay. Interesting. All right. Um, so in that part where they showed some images of like um, of like the the younger counterparts when they were small, you know, with with the guitar and stuff. Would that who who was that? Hmm. Probably find that on Wikipedia. But anyway, thank you for joining me. Um, if you're new to the channel again, consider subscribing. And thank you very much for uh, recommending this group to me. I'll see you guys soon. Stay tuned for more Deathstroke 9.